Okay, walk me through it. Right. Um, let's start with the turbocharger here, and, and uh, what I hope you can picture is that uh, valve right there. Okay. It's not really a valve. That's the uh, seventh injector. That's where okay. extra fuel uh, gets injected to perform regenerations. And actually, a key feature of our US-10 trucks is that we won't be doing active regenerations uh, with uh, highway trucks any longer. We're going to do all of our regenerations with uh, a passive regeneration process. But let's just see what happens now. We have the exhaust go on the way. Excuse me. Can you? And and the exhaust comes and enters the diesel particulate filter and travels down through here. Okay. Now during active regeneration, uh, so described now is how passive regeneration works. Okay. Passive regeneration works this way: the exhaust flow comes out of the turbo, and comes on a pipe that comes under the floor and enters the top of our diesel particulate filter. At that point, it's got two components of oxides of nitrogen there. The one is NO uh, with a single oxygen molecule and the other is NO2. And uh, what we do in this area of the catalyst, and this is not unlike anybody else's uh, DPF, we oxidize that NO and turn it into NO2. Now the NO2 is less stable than the NO and the oxygen that's in it as it travels through the filter part, this is where we've caught that soot, those particulates, those emissions, those smoke uh, are caught in the filter. And the NO2 um, gives up an oxygen atom to the carbon, and the carbon eventually becomes a gas and just leaves the filter that way, chemically, not an oxidation process, but rather uh, just simply a chemical process. And by the time it gets down here, what comes out is NO, uh, because it's given up its oxygen, so what we've done is borrow the, the NO, turn it into NO2, and then it turns back. So you can't say that the diesel particulate filter reduces NOx, but it sure does get rid of that soot, which is the regeneration process. The challenge is you've got to have enough NO or NO2 compared to the soot that you have so that you can get it off. If you don't have enough NOx, you can't get rid of all the soot. And that's been the challenge with the PAO7 generation engines. When that happens, if you don't have enough knots, then we use the fuel that's injected here uh, on an 07 engine uh, to raise the temperature of the gas so that when it gets to here, just like a simple candle, uh, you need heat and fuel and oxygen to have a fire. It's not a fire, but oxidize the uh, soot that's in here under the active regeneration process using the hot gases which raise the temperature of that injector and the oxygen that's in the air and just merely turns it into CO2 and then it's gone. Now that we've gotten rid of all the soot and we've just got the, the hot air really that's coming out, uh, but it's got some NOx in it and we have to make that go down to near zero levels to meet these new emission levels. And the air comes out here, we, we inject some urea, which is, we call diesel exhaust fluid here, and that flows through this area. You can see it's insulated because we want to keep it hot. On our system, it actually flows through the catalytic converter. It's not doing anything yet. We're using this as a pipe to get to the other side. But we want this long decomposition area, the uh, diesel exhaust fluid, to turn into ammonia over that length of time. And because we can, the neat thing is with ammonia is that it nukes the NOx. And that's the reaction that happens. Ammonia plus NOx turns it into uh, nitrogen and water, and we have near zero emissions. So from the time it gets to the back, then it flows through the three catalysts that we have inside here to the front, and then it comes out the tube here, and it comes up and goes out the stacks.